Hello and welcome to JSB Talks Digital, the podcast for marketers, digital transformation champions, and those of you bringing your skills into the digital age. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke, and this podcast is brought to you by Digital Training Institute. Be sure to subscribe to JSB Talks Digital on iTunes or Spotify. I promise you, the 20 minutes you invest each week with me for free will take your digital and social media knowledge to new levels. In this episode number 91, I discuss the power of outreach to drive leads and backlinks. Coming up in today's show, in social media news, Facebook ends Explorer newsfeed test, Twitter expands verification, and LinkedIn releases a new guide to optimizing your LinkedIn ad campaigns. I interview Courtney Blair about the power of outreach marketing. In shoutouts, advice from three outreach marketing experts. Ask JSB. In JSB's column, I share my approach to connecting with marketing influencers and find out what social media tool saved my working week. Social Media News After six months of testing, Facebook is finally closing the door on the Explorer feed. Writing on the Facebook blog, Adam Mazzari, head of Newsfeed, said, Explorer feed was a trial response to consistent feedback from people who said they wanted to see more from family and friends in Newsfeed. He says, The idea was to create a version of Facebook with two different Newsfeeds. One as a dedicated place with posts from friends and family, and another as a dedicated place for posts from pages. To understand if people might like two separate feeds, we started a test in October 2017 in six countries. Alex admits, you gave us our answer. People don't want two separate feeds. He says that in surveys that they ran, people told them that they were less satisfied with the posts they were seeing and having two separate feeds didn't actually help them connect with more family and friends. For many social media influencers, getting the blue verified tick on Twitter is the ultimate status symbol. I have to admit, I had applied for my blue tick, but I got no response from Twitter. However, there is hope for you and I yet. Once reserved for major celebrities to indicate that the account was official and not fake, the trademark blue check mark has expanded in recent years to include journalists and other public figures. Now, according to a CNET report, the social media giant wants to make its use even more prevalent. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey said in a recent live stream that the company plans to offer its blue check mark verification badge to more of its users. He said the company is working on a new process to verify people's identity and ensure their credibility. With Facebook organic reach dying and cost per acquisition increasing, it might be an idea to look at LinkedIn if, like me, you are a B2B business. Their new ebook, The Secret Sauce to Advertising on LinkedIn, is packed with great insights and tips. Here's what you'll learn. How LinkedIn defines objectives for marketing on the platform. How they balance organic and paid reach. What they've learned about targeting, testing and optimizing campaigns. Their approach to bidding and budget management. And how they built an always on content strategy. Make sure you download the ebook on the blog post associated with this podcast over at digitaltraining.ie. Interview. In this episode, I interview Courtney Blair, founder of Sippy Content. Courtney started her business out of necessity. 
When she was pregnant and desperate for work and unable to find it, she began contacting anyone and everyone she knew for work that she could do from home. Lo and behold, someone had something for her to do. It was her dad. He had his own online business in the psychology realm and he wanted to be featured on podcasts. Fast forward three years and Zippy Content was born. Zippy Content now represents almost 100 entrepreneurs, authors, coaches and consultants from across the globe and Courtney helps find them interviews on podcasts. Zippy Content is also expanding into a full-blown multimedia PR agency. JSB Talks Digital. 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 So, Courtney Blair, you're very welcome to JSB Talks Digital, and we have been having a conversation online for a number of months. And you reached out to me initially because you had some um, guests potentially for my show, and I know that I have interviewed a number of them. But then I got interested in you popping up in my inbox all the time and then you suggest it yourself as an <laughs> interviewee and as you know I went back to you immediately and I said I love the surprise guest I'd love to have you on my podcast yes. so today we're going to talk about the skills of digital outreach because I think you're very good at it because I've been at the other end of your digital outreach but first of all for my <laughs> listeners and for the viewers who are watching the live stream, um, give us your backstory. You've got an interesting backstory. So, backstory um, behind Zippy Content is basically, um, I, I got started doing this um, about four years ago, uh, just working for my dad. So, I was, um, I was pregnant when I started looking for work, and obviously, it, it's really hard to find a job when you're pregnant, and people know that you're about to go on, on maternity leave and you're probably going to be gone a couple months and, and even then you're not going to be able to work full time. So it's like so undesirable for an employer, you know, to, to hire someone pregnant. So I just told myself, okay, Courtney, it's make or break. Like you still, you still need to make money, you know, so um, you have a computer, you know, so that's kind of what I did. And I started looking for work and, and uh, after a couple months of not really, I was like freelance writing for five bucks an article and, you know, after all this stuff that was just so not fun at all. Um, I finally went to my dad and just said, dad, I need a job, you know, please give me a job. And so he has his own online business um, in the psychology realm. And so he had me just start finding him podcast interviews which I thought was bizarre at the time. Mm -hmm. Who wants? It didn't make any sense to me at all. I didn't understand why they were a good tool for business. I, I just started. It was very primitive. I mean, I'm just looking at iTunes lists and reaching out to anybody that's affiliated with podcasts. And I'm sure a lot of the podcasters that I've worked with for a long time could attest that I was not good at outreach in the beginning. It, it was definitely a trial and error process, and it was um, it's taken a while to get to where we are now. So. I feel very privileged and honored that you think that I'm really good at it because <laughs> I wasn't always this way. It was definitely a rough start as far as outreach goes. When yeah. it comes to the world of the internet and digital marketing, it's an extremely noisy place. You know, I blog, I vlog, I have the podcast, lots of social media now involved in live streaming. Um, but, you know, yeah. outreach is a skill and maybe a tactic that not everybody is engaged in and that's where we try and get personal and matching the right people with the right content producer mm -hmm. how did you come across the niche then of of podcasters authors and speakers what led you to to that group so um when i started doing this um my my dad and i were kind of brainstorming and deciding who my ideal clients would be um if who i would be reaching out to who could benefit the most from being on podcasts um, and now this is only one tiny faction of who I represent, but we were just targeting authors, 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 authors. Like we want you to do, um, to promote your books on podcasts. And that was like, we thought the most, the people who could benefit from it the most. So, uh, that's just who I targeted in the beginning. Um, I mean, definitely when I started reaching out to, um, you know, influencers and people that maybe would want to be featured on other shows, 
um, it was the scariest part of outreach to me. You know what I mean? Because sure, like you can reach out to a podcaster all day and suggest guests, you know, but, but reaching out to, you know, somebody big and offering your services to them is like a whole other ball game. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I feel like I got very lucky in that, um, I just targeting authors is a very, very broad, you know, very broad term. And so that kind of looped in entrepreneurs and, you know, all kinds of stuff that I didn't, I wasn't really planning on targeting, but it, it, that's what happened. And it worked out beautifully. It was just so perfect. So, um, yeah, I definitely had to get good at just being relatable over an email. You know what I mean? Like that's like, you kind of have to, um, incorporate your personality along with, making them understand that you get them and you see them and, and you're not just like some spammer who's sending out 5 million emails a day, you know? So there's, there's kind of, um, you have to be very methodical when it comes to it, for sure. So your initial author niche evolved into speakers, consultants, podcasters, um, and I can actually see mm -hmm. how that evolved because as content creators, we need to amplify our content and if you've got a particular audience that yes. you want to speak to, the best way is actually to piggyback on somebody else who has that audience. And so by doing some digital outreach and putting two like-minded people together who are after the same um, audience, everybody wins. Now, I think mm -hmm. my listeners and the viewers who are watching the live stream right now will want to know your how-to tactics how is it that you now represent over a hundred people um, and that on a daily basis you're actually securing interviews for them on podcasts? So um, that we, as far as now representing a hundred people, it's been really amazing because I was I was cold outreaching to people to ask like to offer my services for a couple months not for very long and then it just sort of started snowballing um, once I became exposed to people's networks you know what I mean so uh, I didn't I wasn't super aware of how strong it is to leverage another person's network until I started working with influencers who would expose me to their network and it was like whoa all of a sudden I have 50 people in my inbox, you know what I mean? Because I was exposed to one person's network, you know? So um, definitely, like you said, leveraging, leveraging, leveraging people's visibility is, you know, it's the way that my business has grown. Um, and my podcasters network, as far as just, um, you know, how, I mean, we're working with uh, going on 400 podcasters who regularly accept our guest suggestions. When I first started um, cold outreaching a year ago, I had I had probably 20 podcasters that had had accepted my guest suggestion so far. Like it was so tiny, and um, now you know where we've grown substantially, uh, and I think it's because of the way that we do things in terms of outreach for finding the interviews. So we're we are 50 percent um, working with the network that we work with regularly, right? So we have this network, and it's like a beautiful machine, and we just have to send the guests, and then. We have a team of outreach girls who are every single day sending cold emails to podcasters that we've never worked with. So we're double, we're hitting it from both sides, and that's how we're able to generate so many interviews um, for people. So, and that just, it's wonderful because my clients can tell me exactly the shows they want to be on, and we can make sure that my outreach team includes them in their outreach. Um, and then that brings in just even more podcasters. Like the network just doubles over itself all the time because, you know, we're, we're hitting it from both sides. So it's been, um, it's been a beautiful thing. <laughs> so not only have you um, increased your own network and your ecosystem and your brand, but having like access to 400 podcasts is quite remarkable. So you've got somebody like me who's an author and a speaker and a consultant and a podcaster and, you know, obviously my ears are going to prick going, oh, 400 podcasters. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you hitting different niches or, you know, are these podcasts in a particular industry? We are just across, across the niches. I mean, we represent investors, real, any, anybody in real estate. Um, we represent entrepreneurs, people who specialize in marketing, um, I mean, really, the sky's the limit. There's a podcast about every anything and everything, you know what I mean? And as long as 
as long as somebody has some sort of internet game dialed in and they have a message, they can benefit from doing these interviews. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. It's an amazing tool. So I think we probably got to ans- answer the question of the detractors and the cynics out there who are like, podcasts, so what? I mean, how many listeners or downloads did you have? I mean, my podcast is growing. I had 10,000 mm-hmm. downloads last year, but that's still a significant sum for me. But I totally agree with you right. because while my podcast only had 10,000 downloads and commercial radio stations, you know, have more listeners, for me, it's the quality of the people who are listening and the fact that right. I am speaking to my ideal audience. Um, have you found that the customers that you exactly. are working with are getting the value add and you know leads and sales as a result of the work that you and your team are doing? So there's a couple ways. I mean, first and foremost, my my team um, specializes in making sure that the interviews that my clients are ultimately they're paying me for are going to turn into money for them. You know what I mean? Like like not only are they going to meet an amazing person who's who's a like-minded amazing person the podcaster who's doing amazing things like them and have the opportunity to maybe collaborate or whatever but their client or their audience is also going to be the interviewees potential clients because you know we make sure that they match in that sense you know what i mean so um that's one way that we're just making sure that um that it's all there but also a lot of my clients have sales funnels. Um, and that's something that I were realizing is just, they go like this. You know what I mean? If you have, if you have five podcasters a month interview you, and each of those podcasters has anywhere from 5,000 to 200,000 downloads per month, and they're sharing your sales funnel with their networks, you know what I mean? Their, their, their email list, their social media networks. Um, along with the episode, that's exposure that your funnel would have never had otherwise. And it's potentially millions more eyes that are going to be on it. You know what I mean? So that's the other way that my clients are monetizing doing podcast interviews. And it's not about, it just shows it's not just about talking and, you know, being on an interview. There's so much more to it that goes along with it. So yeah, that's, that's how they're doing it. (laughs) So I'm, I'm kind of interested also in the fact that you're your business is evolving. And for me, you know, having this conversation, I guess it reinforces to me that podcasting as a, as a PR tactic in our overall marketing mix is certainly growing and it does hold weight. But this has also allowed you to expand right. your business. And tell us about that, because this is, again, indicative that, you know, podcasting isn't just podcasting. Podcasting is media. Podcasting is PR podcasting is digital marketing. Yes, it is. It is. There are several different ways that we are branching out this year. Uh, I mean, just pictures that be content like a tree, you know, and it's, we're just branching off into a whole bunch of different amazing, super cool directions that a year ago I wouldn't have even fathomed. I mean, this is so cool. So um, I've been talking about going full PR for quite some time, um, and I'm, you know, really just getting my feelers out there as far as um, making the contacts, making the connections, and, and over the last, I mean, I can't reveal too much because some of it's not all the way set in stone, but we've made connections um, with TV interviewers, uh, radio interviewers, um, other types of, you know, uh, writing opportunities, public speaking opportunities is a huge one that I've had a lot of people show interest in. And just in our outreach processes, we've just accidentally bumped into people who are doing all this stuff, you know what I mean? And that are going to be amazing partners for us, you know? So, um, it's just turned into, it's like the law of attraction, right? You know, like it's just, I, we say that we want to do these things and then like the connections just come in, they trickle in and, present themselves and um you know it's so it's so amazing it's really cool um i mean even down to um helping people helping people pitch their tv shows to networks is something that is coming this year as well you know so um it's definitely just the different ways that we're going the the sky's kind of a limit it's it's really cool so finally courtney for anybody who may be thinking about starting digital outreach or who are already doing it and and feeling a little bit frustrated, what few tips would you get, give them to um, ensure that they get better results? 
So, um, first and foremost, mind your spam laws. <laughs> uh, definitely make sure that you are reaching out to people that are relevant to what you're asking and you're not just sending emails to everybody trying to, you know, thinking, oh, maybe they'll know somebody, you know, like you need to reach out to people who are exactly relevant. Take the time to do your research, find something of common interest or something that they're up to that you think is really cool. I mean, you're writing a friend ultimately, like you need to keep in mind that emails come across so easily as spammy business sales emails. Like you need to think of this as I'm writing a friend and I want them to read this and think that I'm not emailing everybody else for this. You know, like it has to be very personal. I learned this the hard way. <laughs> this is something I learned. Like when I first got started, I was like sending emails to everybody I could send them to, all the podcasts in the world. And I really learned, I really learned that lesson. So um, that's the biggest thing I would think. Um, in terms of pitching yourself or um, whatever it is, it's the same thing. Keep it short and sweet. Nobody wants to read a five-paragraph email if they don't even know you. You know what I mean? So short, sweet, to the point, personal. I mean, that's the best I can do as far as tips. Uh, that's how we make all the connections that we make, you know. So definitely those are the best I can do. <laughs> okay. Well, now it's time to pitch you to my community and can you let people know where they can find out more about you and if they're interested in hiring you? Uh, Zippycontent.com is my website. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook. My, my Facebook is just Courtney Blair. Uh, my, Zippy Con my Zippy Content Facebook page you can find under that name as well, under, under Zippy Content. So that's, um, that's where you can find me. That's where you can book an appointment with me. There's an option on my Facebook and on my website to book it a Calendly appointment, appointment with me for a consultation, and um, let's do this. <laughs> uh, Courtney, so delighted to have you on my podcast. Um, after I had a number of your clients on my podcast, so it was nice to get to the source of all of those interviewees. Thank you so much for that, by the way. It's been such a pleasure working with you, you know, working with so many people. It can be kind of risky working with, um, you know, some people. You're really relying on other people to follow through. So it's been it's been amazing working with you. We really appreciate you interviewing so many of our people, and I look forward to a, a lot more um, time working together. Great, and I'm delighted that I was on your Facebook uh, live stream. Also, we've done a double on the content creation <laughs> today. Um, so, and as host, I think you have to end this meeting because you hold control. Thank you so much, Joanne. This has been great, um, and I look forward to talking with you soon. We do need to have another another conversation coming up here, so we can we can schedule that in a minute. Shoutouts. In this part of the show, I give shoutouts to brands, organizations, or individuals whose work online is remarkable and worth talking about. In this episode, I'm recommending the work of three. Outreach experts. One. Optin Monster is great for inbound leads, but its founder Saeed Balki says that they get a lot of mentions for Optin Monster, but some of those mentions do not link back to their website. His favorite tactic is to get his team to use Buzzsumo to identify these opportunities and reaching out to ask for the link. Saeed maintains that if you follow up quite quickly, your success rate for getting links is really high. Two. Dubliner Ian Cleary has launched a new tool called Outreach Plus, which already has made it to Tool of the Week on this podcast. Ian says we must pause before we outreach. He says one of the biggest problems with outreach it's when people blast out a large group of unpersonalized emails and expect to get a response. He has created the pause formula. P for personalized, A for appreciative, U for useful, S for small requests and short emails, and E for engaging. Three. Adam Connell of Blogging Wizard says you need a compelling pitch and a mutually beneficial offer to get bloggers and online websites to publish your content. 
A big fan of outreach, Adam says instead of finding a prospect and pitching them right away, you should connect with them first on multiple occasions and through different platforms. He says the idea is that when someone receives an email from somebody they recognize, they'll be far more likely to open it. Adam recommends subscribing to their email list and using that as a way to start a conversation directly. He says, just don't make the mistake of subscribing and replying to their first email with a pitch. In this week's Ask JSB, my question comes from Jayan, who attended a recent digital marketing masterclass of mine. She works in a B2B media company targeting senior leaders for media training. Jayan wants to know how to target those ideal prospects with outreach. So, Jayan, here is my top three tips. Firstly, Identify your ideal prospects' top three pain points. Then, produce content in multiple formats that delivers solutions and speaks directly to them. Finally, use LinkedIn to find 50 to 100 of your ideal clients, connect, and then share this content with them. They should thank you for it. Don't forget, if you have a burning social media or digital marketing question, simply click on digitaltraininginstitute.ie forward slash askjsb and leave me a voicemail. You can also send me your question through any of my social networks. JSB's column. In today's JSB's column, I share my personal outreach approach to connecting with hot prospects. I'm currently working on my new business project called Public Sector Marketing Pros. This website is obviously for marketing professionals who work in the public sector. Now, a lot of people will say that JSB is known in Ireland for being a digital marketer. But heretofore, I haven't strategically approached public sector marketers. So in essence, you could argue that I'm starting from point zero. I've had this idea to connect with global public sector marketing pro influencers. I want to find out who these people are. I want to know where they work. And I want to know what digital marketing tactics they are using in government or public sector agencies right now and that are generating success. So I've created my public sector marketing pros video influencer series. I hope you can see where this is going. I'm going to find these influencers using LinkedIn as my main channel. I'm going to do some research on their work. I'm then going to reach out to them and connect with them initially on LinkedIn. I will introduce myself by letting them know that I am currently writing my second book on digital communications for the public sector. This should definitely prick their interest and it will be a mutually beneficial connection for both of us. I'll then share some of my really good public sector marketing content in the form of a video, a podcast or a blog post. It's probably going to be around one or two or three key issues. For example, PR crisis communication management, trust marketing, or digital content creation. After that then, I'm going to take the relationship a little bit further and inquire as to whether they would like to be one of my influencers on my new video series. If and when they agree to come on the interview, then we are going to then develop the relationship even further. At that stage, the working relationship becomes a lot deeper. They're then on my email list. They're then perhaps sharing my content with their whole organization. If you want to do outreach successfully as part of your digital marketing strategy, but don't know where to start, then get in touch. 
JSB can help. Simply drop me an email to joanne at digitaltraining.ie. Social Media Tool of the Week. The social media tool that saved my working week this week is RFs. RFs helps you to learn why your competitors are ranking so high and what you need to do to outrank them. The tools that you get with RFs include competitive analysis, keyword research, backlink research, content research, rank tracking, and web monitoring. You can take a seven day trial for just $7. Simply log on to rfs.com and that's A-H-R-E-F-S dot com. Thank you so much for tuning into episode 91 of JSB Talks Digital. As always, I have everything discussed on today's show on my award-winning blog over at digitaltraining.ie. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You will never miss a Friday if you do. You'll find us on iTunes, Spotify, Libsyn, Stitcher, or SoundCloud. And if you enjoy the podcast, I'd absolutely love and appreciate a review. Don't forget to send me your questions for Ask JSB or for your topic ideas for a show. Keep in touch on social. You'll find me on Twitter at Tweets by JSB. Jump over to our Facebook page. It's Digital Training Institute. You can also snap me to JSB Snaps or why not get in touch on Instagram. I'm JSB Grams. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke. This is JSB Talks Digital. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you soon. JSB Talks Digital. Digital.